Good morning friends. I hope everyone is doing well. I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding. In the previous video, I have discussed one of the gate question which is gate 2010 question on related to operand forwarding. In this video, I am discussing gate 2015 question related to operand forwarding so that you will understand the importance of operand forwarding technique and also how to solve these gate questions also. So first let me read out the question, then we will solve it. A four stage pipeline consists of instruction fetch and decode. They are combinedly making it as one stage. Operand fetch, process or perform operation and write back. So you have four stages. So previous example gate 2010, we made it as five stages because there we have instruction fetch and instruction decode as separate stages. But here instruction fetch and instruction decode is happening in a single stage. So we have reduced it to four stages. That is what they are giving the questions. The instruction fetch and decode, operand fetch and write back takes one clock cycle. Okay. The perform operation takes one clock cycle for performing addition and subtraction, three clock cycles for multiplication, five clock cycles for division. So it is taking one clock cycle for performing addition and subtraction and we need three clock cycles for performing multiplication and five clock cycles for performing division. The number of clock cycles required to execute the below instructions using operand forwarding and they have given four instructions such as I0, I1, I2 and I3 and they have given four options we have to find how many number of cycles are required to execute these four instructions. So now as they have given the operand forwarding technique, we have to see whether we have any read after write data hazards or not. Data hazards are classified into three types. Okay, one is read after write data hazard, write after read data hazard and write after write data hazard. Okay, we have read after write data hazard and write after read data hazard and write after write data hazard. To avoid this read after write data hazard, we have a technique called operand forwarding. And to avoid the write after read and write after write data hazard, we have a concept called or a technique called register renaming. Okay, all these concepts and all the data hazards we have discussed in the previous videos. If you have not watched those videos, don't worry, you watch this gate video. After that, you can watch these videos for better understanding. And these concepts are very, very important for university exams and also for the competitive exams. Now, let me solve it. So first I need to find whether we have any read after write data hazard. You can ask me what is this read after write data hazard. If you let's take that this instruction I0 is having R5 is equal to R0 into R1 because you are performing the multiplication between R0 and R1 and the result is storing in R5. This is my instruction I0. And similarly if you see that I2 instruction what it is doing? R7 is equal to R5 plus R6. So the destination operand is R5. I think everyone know what is source operand and destination operand. These R5 and R0 and R1 are the operands. Whereas R0 and R1 they are the source operands and the result will be stored in R5 registers. So I will call this register R5 as the destination operand. So we will find by using whether we have any read after write hazard is there or not, we will try to identify with the help of concept called domain and range. For instruction I0, the domain is the source operands. What are the source operands are there? We will consider them as a domain. So R0 and R1 are the domain for instruction I0 and R5 is the range. Similarly, R 5 and R6 are the domain for the instruction I2 and R7 is the range. Now if you see that the range of instruction I2, okay, not the range, the domain of instruction 2 
and if you perform the intersection with the range of i1 because the destination operand in i0 is acting as a source operand in instruction i2 so you should perform this instruction like r0 into r1 you have to perform and you should get that result after getting that result only you have to perform the addition otherwise you will get the data inconsistency why if you perform before getting the r5 if you perform the addition you are performing the addition on the previous value of r5 you are not performing the addition on the updated value of r5 so that's what if you have a domain of intersection i2 and range of an instruction i1 if you are having a phi then i will say that we don't have any read after write data hazard if it is not equal to 5 i can say that we have a read after write data hazard now you see for a instruction 2 what is the domain r5 and r6 are the domains and range for instruction i1 is r5 so if i perform the intersection i will get r5 which is not equal to 5 so i can say that we have a read after write data hazard okay so if you have a read after data hazard write data hazard you should be careful okay while performing this instructions similarly you can identify between instruction i1 sorry between instruction i1 and instruction i2 you have a data hazard means read after write data hazard because this destination operand r6 is acting as a source operand here similarly i2 and i3 there is a read after write data hazard because the destination operand r7 is acting as a source operand in instruction i3 so now we will start executing these instructions okay so we have i0 instruction let me write here i0 i1 i2 i3 i hope it is visible for you okay let me draw the table so that you will understand the concept in a better way okay and you have a time limit you have a clock cycle 1, clock cycle 2, clock cycle 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let me first finish up to 10, then we will go for the next one. In the meantime, you please press the like button, share the videos with your friends and give your feedback in the comment section. Now we will see how to perform the instruction I0. How I should perform? First, I need to perform the instruction fetch and decode how many clock cycles it is taking one clock cycle so let me write in shortcut as if because the space is less i am writing it as if so you please consider it is instruction fetch and decode you are performing then next you have to perform the operand fetch how many clock cycles it is taking one clock cycle okay then you have to perform the operation as it is a multiplication how many clock cycles it is taking 3 clock cycles. So, 3, 4, 5. During these clock cycles, you will perform the multiplication. Then what you have to do? Write back the result in the register, which is write back how many clock cycles it is taking? Only one clock cycle. So, up using 6 clock cycles, you have performed the instruction execution I0. Now, we will come for the I1. Okay. Can I perform the instruction fetch here? No, because already instruction I0 is performing its instruction fetch in the first clock cycle. So, I can perform here. Similarly, I can perform the operand fetch here. Now, you see here. Can I perform the operation here for the instruction 2? Here? No, I cannot perform here because already instruction I0 is executing its operations in the fourth clock cell and fifth clock cycle so perform operation or perform operation stays is busy with executing the instruction i0 i should not perform now we need to check whether we have any read after write data hazard so you have a destination operand r5 here there is no here it is not there between i0 and i1 
there is no read after write data hazard so you no need to worry so just you perform the operation and how many clock cycles it is required for performing the division five clock cycles are required so these are the stall cycles because you cannot perform the operation here because i not is already doing once the i not gone to the stage 4 which is right back i1 can start executing in stage 3 which is perform operation five stages it will take let me take so five stages i have performed then in the 11th clock cycle 11th clock cycle i have performed the right back because one clock cycle is required for performing the right backs operation now we will see instruction i2 instruction i2 can start fetching its instructions and decode it i can perform the operand fetch now while executing the instruction i2 you need to check whether you have any read after write data hazard or not the destination operand is acting as a source operand in this one so i can say that range of i not and domain of the instruction i2 you have not null meaning is that there is a common operand is there so i can say that there is a read after write data hazard is there so now if you does not use operand forwarding technique then what you should do you should get you will get the result of R6 after performing this one. Am I right? Then only you have to start executing it. Are you able to understand? Because you should get the R2 and R3 multiplication and the result will be stored in R6. Then when you will get the result normally if you does not use the operand forward technique, you will get after this stage. So you should not perform anything using this one. However, if you use the operand forwarding technique, okay, they will say that you no need to wait till the write back. You can start performing after execution. Why? Because using the execution stage or the, in this example, it is perform operation stage, you will perform the operation. What is the operation? R2 into R3. Okay. It is a division. R2 by R3. Are you able to understand? So R2 by R3 and you will assign the value also in the R6. Are you able to understand? You will do the r6 is equal to r2 by r3 and the result also meaning is that division and the result also store because these are the operations okay then you will get the r6 result here itself after this po because with the help of registers you will get the r6 results here so you can start executing the addition here are you able to understand if you still does not understand i request you to go and watch the operand forwarding video where i have clearly explained everything okay so please try to understand you have to perform the r5 plus r6 you are getting the r6 value here using the operand forwarding if you does not use the operand forwarding you will get the r6 value here but here r6 value you will give the as an input to this instruction i2 that is what we will call it as operand forwarding you are forwarding the operand okay so r5 value is already you have fetched and r6 value also you have fetched here but this value again you are updating here and then you are performing the addition so if you perform the addition how many clock cycles is required only one clock cycle is required then i can perform the write back option is it clear so i have executed up to instruction i2 let me execute the instruction i3 then what is these clock cycles i will do these are the stall cycles because i am not performing anything for the instruction i2 now let me see the instruction i3 i should not execute the i5 here i5 here i5 here then only i can perform here why because instruction i0 is doing the instruction fetch here instruction i1 is doing instruction i2 is doing so these all are the stall cycles okay then can i do the operand fetch here yes operand fetch no one is doing so i can do it now you need to check whether you have instruction i2 and i3 you have any read after write data hazard yes there is a read after write data hazard is there because the destination operand in instruction i2 is acting as a source operand in instruction i3 so then where i have to perform 
I have to perform the operation after this one because you are using a operand forwarding. As you are performing a subtraction, only one clock cycle is required. Then you have to perform the write back option. So now tell me how many clock cycles you have performed. Within how many clock cycles we have performed these four instructions? Within 13 clock cycles we have performed. So they have given option A as 11 clock cycles, option B as 12 clock cycles, option C as 13 clock cycles, option D as 14 clock cycles. So the right answer is option C. I hope you have understood how I solved the gate 2015 question related to operand forwarding. Now those who are seriously preparing for gate exams or any competitive exams, I want to give a smaller task for you. There is a similar question in gate 2006 in the branch of IT. That time we have a separate question paper for CSC and IT. So in 2006, in the IT question paper, they have given similar type of question. I request you to go and check that question and solve by yourself. If you can get the correct answer, I will be the happy person in this world. So I request everyone to go and do that task. So I hope if you still have any doubts related to this question, feel free to ask me in the comment section or if you does not get the solution correct solution for this question also you can send an email so that for this question i here i have stuck then i will try to send a reply to you within 24 hours i think everyone know my email address which is parnika tutorials at the red gmail.com the youtube channel name at the red gmail.com is it clear so it is very simple email address you can easily note it down and can send a email so i hope you are enjoying the videos Please share the videos with your friends. If it is feeling like it is a boring video, it is very lengthy video, he is irritating us, then you share the videos with your enemies. So motive is don't stop sharing the videos. Either share the videos with your friends or share the videos with your enemies. And subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the regular updates. Thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day.